call to order this uh, meeting of the Superior Planning Commission. Uh, Phyllis, can you call the roll, please? Sure. Chairperson John Craigman. Here. Vice Chairperson Craig Prestesader. Here. Commissioners Ian Elverson. Here. Matt Paulson. Here. Willis Harden here. James McGinnis. Here. Bob McCool. Here. Rochelle Rittmaster. Tom Ricker. Here. Assistant Town Manager Matt Magley. Here. Attorney Christine Strateski. Here. Strateski. And Brett Fox. Here. All right, um, I, next item on the agenda is uh, public comment on consent agenda and non-agenda items. Um, if there's anyone here who would like to speak on <laughs> agenda, consent agenda items or non-agenda items, this is your opportunity. Seeing none, well, we will move on to uh, the next item, the consent agenda. There's two items, minutes from the May 4th, 2010 meeting and minutes of the September 7th, 2010 meeting. The uh, chair would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda or if anyone has comments on the minutes. Yes, sir. Uh, question a cool. uh, couple of fixes on the May. May 4th. I thought there might be. Uh... <laughs> um, let's see, page three, Commissioner McCool Bell's planning commission has been stripped, we were striped. And then um, on page five, um, I guess second full paragraph, uh, mentioned that chairperson Greg Kraft said something doesn't fall into the, I think it's a purview, it's a preview. So it's just another type of review. That's all I think. Is that it? Those are the only two items. Okay. We make those changes and then approve the minutes. No, just make a motion, a motion to, to approve, approve the minutes. Changes. Okay. And then we'll make the changes before they approve. Move to uh, approve the minutes uh, with the changes that were brought up by Mr. McCall. I have a motion. A second. A second by Commissioner Ricker. Um, any discussion? All in favor? Uh, James, were you voting on both? I wasn't here for one. We haven't done the consent agenda yet. Oh, we were just we're just doing the, the minutes of May fourth at the moment. Right. Okay, okay. Sure. Okay. The other item is not pulled from the consent agenda, so we can either pull it and discuss it, or some can, we can approve the consent agenda. Make a motion. So, um, just for clarification. For the May 4th, there would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And did you abstain or? No, I voted in favor of approving the minutes of okay. the May 4th meeting. Thank you. And then there would be, uh, because um, Commissioner Elverson was not a commissioner at that right, time, so he, so he would be nays and we have one absent. Okay. Okay. And then he's technically a nay, even though he he's not eligible. Well, yeah, I don't think he'd be a nay. He's just absent. Which would actually be a yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but he can't even be a yes. Okay, so we still have the item, the consent agenda, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Motion to approve the uh, consent agenda. Okay. Second. Okay. Second. So we have a motion by Press Stater, and actually I saw Commissioner McCool, so we'll put him in the minutes this time. Right. The, uh, for the second, all in favor? I, I wasn't here. here. Yeah, I wasn't here. Oh, okay. <laughs> so one, two, three, four, five, six. Six, six yeas. One abstention. Two abstentions. Three. Which are really yeas, apparently. Yeah, they are. Okay. All right. So that passed. Good. Okay. That completes item four on the agenda. The public next item, item five, public hearing and approval of the clear wireless final flat site plan. Do you have my little cheat sheet, by the way? Because I'll never remember all that stuff. Well, no, maybe not. Uh oh. Get there. <laughs> okay. Uh, 
Okay. Phyllis, is there proof of publication? Public I, hearing. I do have the proof of publication. Thank you. Okay. Does the applicant have a presentation? Would you like to come forth and do make that? Or do you want to start with Well, I was just going to give a brief presentation. In, yeah, a brief introduction. Uh, Excuse me, now. So, Did you uh, open the public hearing? You have to oh. open the public hearing. This public hearing is now officially <laughs> open. Okay, we have proof of publication. Yes. Proof. Does either staff or the applicant would they like to start with a, with uh, a presentation? Just take a quick, uh, brief introduction. Okay. Um, uh, we are considering a final plat site plan for a um, within the Rock Creek Ranch PUD for a clear wire wireless communication antenna. Um, be located between community park or in community park between the ball field and Williams and the synthetic turf field. Uh, the applicant is here to make a brief presentation and then open up the blank questions and the staff will have any follow up for that okay. after the presentation. Well, you're, just come up to the microphone and state your name and your address. <coughs> Hello, my name is Matt Schucher. I reside at 1234 East Bryan Avenue in Salt Lake City, Utah. Um, here representing Clear Wireless on their proposed uh, application here for this site. Um, I, I won't take too much of your time, so I can turn it back over to you guys to see what kind of questions you might have that I can address. Uh, So um, we're proposing a wireless communications facility, an unmanned facility, um, uh, to build a stealth tower in the uh, city park that will include three, F, three RF panel antennas and one backhaul antenna. Um, uh, the Clearwire mission is to empower a smarter, more connected world with the fastest, most efficient, high-capacity 4G network. Um, this is the same infrastructure as a, a wireless cell phone company, so uh, you build the cell phone towers and whatnot, but this is going to actually be for uh, wireless internet that will be used you know, on laptops, homes, uh, uh, combination of the both, PDAs, uh, phones, that sort of thing. Um, in fact, here is, uh, you know, you have a residential modem just like you would with a Comcast or whoever. The USB would be like the air card that you can get with Verizon and whatnot. Um, these are several devices that will be used to utilize the service. Um, I don't even know why they put the slide in here. Uh, <laughs> I guess it's basically just signifying the capacity that the Clearwire uh, has with their service. Um, it's this new fourth generation system uh, that you've probably seen all over the TV with Sprint and different companies. Um, it's, it's broadband speed, high, high speed internet. Uh, we have what we call an, a network of networks. We, we have relationships with Sprint, Intel, Google, and other companies. Uh, Sprint is actually um, a 51 per, they're the majority shareholder in the company. Um, so we can leverage their infrastructure and, and uh, enterprise sales force. Um, and so we, we have the ability to basically hit the ground running with the infrastructure that we have in place with strategic partners. Um, this is the largest 4G network in the country right now. Uh, I, as I said, come from Salt Lake City. I just helped them launch that market. Uh, they called me out here to, to help here. Uh, but we, Clearwire is doing um, a national launch uh, across the nation in all of the major metropolitan areas and we'll fill in the gaps from there. Um, uh, you can see all of the networks they've already launched. Uh, you know, they're continuing to work on several uh, different markets. Um, oh, and if I go back, sorry. Uh, I don't, what did I do? Um, down here, uh, 
this pops, what, what, what that refers to is the amount of population that the, the, the network covers. And so currently we're covering over 60 million people um, and are expecting to double that by the end of 2010. Uh, I don't know that you're interested in the clear wire values, but <laughs> here they are. Um, uh, basically, we're customer centric with every decision, really focused on low cost to provide a low cost solution for internet. Um, as you know, there's so many different applications, you know, cell phones and, and the charges that you guys see with those nowadays, you can do. Skype on your phone and different things that as long as you have a, a Wi-Fi connection, you, you actually don't even need a service plan anymore in some cases as long as you have that network connection. So it really could reduce the cost for a lot of people utilizing this service. Um, so our proposal, like I said, is to build a self stealth uh, <coughs> um, pole in the city park uh, and then install an equipment cabinet uh, in a 10 by 10 lease space with the city. Um, in, in inside an enclosed structure. This is uh, the view to the northwest. You've got these big, uh, by the football field, you've got these big uh, existing towers. Um, this is what it would look like with uh, the new, so this is a photo sim that the engineers did. Um, and then we would paint it to match the existing poles there. Uh, we always try to blend in as much as possible. We always try to co-locate as much as possible. Um, we always have guidelines and restrictions with cities and municipalities. Um, this is another view. Uh, this is what it would look like, and that is our proposed uh, uh, facility to house the, the equipment that's needed to run the site um, so it would be tucked behind this other building. Um, again, we want to make it as, as stealth as possible, and I know sometimes that's difficult, but I uh, want to blend in the best we can. So. <coughs> Uh, and that's kind of it. Um, are there any questions? Um, yeah, actually, um, I'll start. Uh, the last that last rendering that you showed, mm -hmm. and the previous rendering, it looked like the, the the height of the pole was the same as the light towers, and that one on from that view looked like it was just your rendering, but looked like it was shorter. Well, it was a different view. It's it's a 42 foot tower, and I believe well, you should have drawings there. The Williams Field light poles are are they 40? They, they, they must exceed, be taller than that. They, right? they, yeah, they exceed 42. Okay, so they're taller. Right. right. Okay. Yeah, this is a closer view, and so uh, it, it doesn't go as tall as the light. Uh, but but this is kind of from afar that no, I that would represent it better. Yeah. So just that other one, it appeared to be closer in height to the actual poles. Can can uh, can the, theoretically could you add additional or co-locate with additional providers on this? Theoretically, we can, but because of you know every every when, when an RF engineer designs a site, they're all about height, height, height. You know, uh, obviously, if we put in an 80-foot pole, we could get a lot of you know three or four carriers up there pretty easy. Theoretically, yes, someone could co-locate here as long as that worked for their network. Um, you know, and, and since we're in a 42-foot pole, we take up 10-foot top of it for our equipment. They would be, you below know, that. below that. So, mm -hmm. but so we wouldn't allow other antenna equipment on the ex to be mounted on the exterior. Is that? No, that's correct. I believe it. It. No, I understand. Yeah. Their equipment's all internal. Right. That's right. But yeah. there's other cell towers in town where we have external correct pieces yeah. of equipment. Like at Highway 128. Right. Yeah. Those are would, at some point in the future, would we allow that? Or would that interfere with your equipment if it was mounted out directly outside? It, no. It, it would. It, typically, I would think that you wouldn't allow it, which is probably why we're doing a stealth application. Yeah. Um, but... If, if it we depends the on the equipment. Like some some equipment doesn't jive with ours. Some does. Um, s sometimes you have to have a certain amount of separation, uh, that sort of thing. Okay. I'm just you know I know we're going to the efforts right now of making this stealth, mm -hmm. so to speak. I mean, uh, if anything, but would, meaning that you're not seeing the actual equipment, but right. but would we? Uh, 
is a condition of approval that we would not allow that. Anything mm -hmm. to be mounted on the exterior of that pole. I don't think we can. No, Unless, it's not a condition. Today you can't with technology, but maybe sometimes on the road. Right? Okay, you can regulate that. What? Whether or not they can add it, antenna. It would have to come back through the process if, yeah. if somebody yeah. wanted okay. to do that. Yeah. Have to get through the planning commission and town okay. board. Yeah. I'm just asking the yeah, question. Yeah. I'm oh. not. Yeah, we we would only be approved for yeah, this application. So. <laughs> it just if anything, this, I was like, can't talk about it. if anything, we would require another carrier to either go in the same yeah. pole below or maybe look at a, a larger pole, yeah. a taller pole, yeah, replace it. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah so they would swap it. Okay. Or do an extension. A lot of the poles can just be extended where Extend you don't even up. have to replace them. So. So this tower pole is 24 inch diameter from bottom it's to the top. Straight up, yeah. Straight up. It's not tapered. It's not correct. <laughs> what is the diameter of the light poles? They're not that big, though. A lot less. I don't know. It could be. It um, could be 24. I think they're. It might be 24 at the bottom. Yeah. 24 at the bottom of the tank. Yeah. And the, the hard part for us, because our equipment's at the top, that's where we need the most space. So right. yeah, uh, 24 do. inches is, is about as, uh, you know, this, this back call antenna that I discussed, um, you know, those are dishes that, that connect the network from site to site and things like that. And, and a lot of them, they have round antennas, and their minimum diameter is 30 inches. It seems like they spend some time customizing this to make that pole as small as possible, so. Okay. So are like dishes inside the... Well, inside there, there's, 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 three, there's three flat panel RF antennas and one right. flat panel uh, backhaul antenna. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's not a dish. It's not a dish. But per cone. Correct. Okay. Is the equipment inside the shed itself, um, is it high voltage equipment? No. Um, our, our sites, uh, this is actually pretty unique to Clearwire. Uh, oftentimes, like when we do a, a, a roof mount on a building type installation, we'll get power rather than you know, bringing out a new meter, we'll get power from the landlord because we only take up two 20 volt uh, amps breakers. Two 20 amp breakers. Mm -hmm. So, and, and, and I think we typically provision in case we needed to add more equipment with those landlords, like 60 or 80 amps. But it, yeah, what, what, what will be in there is not high voltage. So, and I'm sure that it'll all, all be locked and secured and everything else. So that was my question. So. Yeah, we, uh, um, our, our equipment is rated to be exterior, um, but to, again, aesthetically look nicer Oftentimes we'll enclose it like that, you know, next to that other building and match that building so it it doesn't stick out. So match that sweet shit that's down there. And so the step down <laughs> transformer is basically for what? Go from 480 to 120. Well, yeah, there there's uh, in the plans because there's not like an existing panel we can pull from. We there, there's a, a nearby. Um, transformer that we're doing a step down to our facility, yeah. Okay. What is the range of the service that this will provide? I mean, how far out uh, would customers be able to utilize it? Um, you know, basically they design the network uh, just like any cell company. They'll, they'll design it uh, so they can go as far as line of sight can see, but that one, you know, it only can carry so much load of people using it at the same time. So you have to have a certain amount of towers, and so this might cover, a, you know, a, a two mile radius or whatever, but it shoots down like this. So when you go to the next pole, it hands off to the next tower type thing. Um, I don't know the exact amount of coverage this particular pole would, um, I could find that out, but I don't know off the top of my head. What's the access to the top of pole look like? How do you get into the to service the equipment? Uh, we we really don't need to service the interior. Um, it would be super rare that we would ever need to get back in the tower. We have uh, RRU units that basically we can control 
the tilt and whatnot of the antennas should we need to change them. Really the only access typically is to the, the base equipment. So, and that's, you know, every once a month or every other month or just as needed if something comes up, so. But if you did have to get in there, would it, I mean, do you have panel access at the top or do you have to take the pole down? Or is it no, we wouldn't have to take the pole down. There there would be, a, a, it's it's a canister and there would be a, a way to take it apart and, and go in there. That would be too cumbersome to do it that way, yeah. Okay. Other questions? The applicant at this time? Does this building kind of blend in with the one that's out there? Are you going to use the same materials? Uh, yeah. Um, we, we can do whatever you guys require of us, I believe. Yeah, it's, like it's been designed to match the existing equipment storage shed. Uh, picture right here. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I asked. So, <laughs> proposed clear wireless new wall to match existing structure exactly for equipment enclosure. So, yeah. That's typically a standard requirement. So. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So um, presentation by staff. Yeah, I've got a couple of things, and then I don't, Fred might have a couple things. <clears throat> Christine, um, we the we structured a uh, lease agreement with Clearwire um, for a ten by fourteen space for the equipment, and um, the lease agreement it includes. Monthly payments of two thousand uh, dollars, with a five percent escalator every year. With a, it's a five-year term, renewable, uh, and the revenue generated from this is to be used for park maintenance expenses. Um, and uh, let's see, that will be considered by the board um, if the planning commission recommend or. Approves uh, the final plat site plan tonight. Um, they'll finalize the agreement at their meeting on October. Right. No, uh, the only thing I would mention is that uh, in going through this application, we did require a stealth application. And there were a couple of uh, different ideas, but in terms of the way their system is set up, it ended up with. Uh, a singular pole. To do this on one of the light poles was uh, difficult because of the space that's needed inside the pole. So the other point I wanted to mention is that we did um, uh, require that they not exceed the 40 foot height, 2 foot height limit for this application, which is the height limit for open space things in the Rock Creek, in Rock Creek Ranch. So meets the height requirement there for this in this uh, in this zone. And we did um, work with Clearwire quite a bit before they submitted their application to see if there were other co-location sites within town that worked for them and worked um, for the town. But this um, site was determined really the only site in town that worked for Clearwire. Okay. Any questions of staff? Um, sorry. Uh, uh, there was mention that there was one piece of feedback from a resident. How were residents made aware of this application, and how did you get that feedback? We um, mailed out notification letters to residents. Um, main, yeah, within 500 feet. Mainly, it was the homes that uh, back up to community park there and um, we didn't have any residents come in prior to this meeting but prior to the one that was canceled um, a few months ago we had a resident come in and look at the plans and um, didn't offer any comments okay is that it questions anyone 
Why the 42 foot height limitation when there's poles around that are 56 feet? I you know, I, so tall there. I personally can't answer that question as to how the park lights were set up. I, I really don't know. Um, right, but why not give them the opportunity to do a 56 foot pole or however those, however tall? Well, this, this is a height commercial though. installation basically, you know, on the site. It's sort of a utility and not quite a utility. And that's allowed, you know, in the open space areas. So we felt that they needed to conform to the height limit. Right, well, we did. The, we did look at um, and discuss with them the possibility of replacing one of the light poles for the application. Um, but because of the size of the pole they needed, um, that's not what no, I'm no. But about. we're talking, talking about just making the the pole that they're putting up match the height of the poles that are there. It serves two purposes. One, it'll be as tall and so um, offer them the opportunity to have a broader reach with the poles that they're putting up. And two, it gives the opportunity to co-locate other things there without necessarily having to take the pole down and put up a new one. So if you're going to do this, and we don't have any control over whether it gets done or not anyway, in terms of public health stuff, then why not make it so that it's functional for more than one? Well, I mean, we're able to do this application and meet the 42-foot height requirement. Yeah. We can't predict what provider may come forward in the future. There, there may be none. And then we have this, you know, another poll. Um, to the <laughs> Did the applicant ask for a taller pole? Um, I, in their initial application, or in their initial discussions with staff, uh, the pole, I don't remember how tall it was, but it did exceed 42 feet. But once we um, discussed our requirements and they went back and looked at what they needed, they said that they could do that. I know that no cell carrier in town has adequate coverage just from talking to people who have various services and a site at Community Park might make sense for, I know AT&T needs it desperately, I know Sprint is just getting it I guess because that's who these guys are. Um, Verizon could use it, so. Well, yeah, we have. We have a number of sites in town. Um, we have three out on Highway 128, and they, they don't reach. And I think we have two or three at Superior Point Office Park. Right, but they don't get to the area of yeah. the El Dorado Drive, for instance. Mm -hmm. None of them do. But the Long Community Park would. Yeah, so and we, a, we haven't had any carriers come forward. So from a planning perspective, though, you're putting it up anyway. Mm -hmm. It has the capability to co-locate other carriers on it. Why go through this again when they do come forward <coughs> later? Well, I think you'd want to uh, review each of those applications as they come forward. And you will, but you already have a site that's set up. And I think your code limits it to 42 feet. They'd have to come in and ask for a variance. It wouldn't just be a regular application. It'd have to be a variance process as well to bypass the 42 feet limitation found in the code. And this time they're and not requesting time a variance. They've not requested that. So they've I mean, said we, we're open we for 42 feet. Give them a variance. Yeah, because they didn't ask for one. It's always better for an applicant to come forward without any variance request if they can. It makes the process. Well, I, I mean, with you. I think I'm with James too. I mean, part of the, the responsibility of the Planning Commission is to think of these things, and so that we don't end up with another tower next to it that's 80 feet high, and you know, be able to provide those kind of recommendations. I mean, that's why there's, you know, seven or eight of us sitting here to, you know, throw those ideas around. And so, sure. if if we just, I mean, I, I, I hope we can discuss it and talk about it, and not just nix it because they didn't ask for it. <laughs> One of his comments was that the, that pole perhaps could be added onto. Yeah, or replaced. Or replaced. So, yeah. Uh, 
uh, and the other thing you got to remember, they could co-locate the next provider would have, and this existing pole would have to be below them a certain distance. That means then that has ramifications, but it might be okay for the second provider. Well, they're. But, but what if I you heard was they need the top 10 feet of the pole, which means that you've got, you're now at a 32 foot height, which is shorter than many of the houses in the neighborhood. So, it, you know, it, it becomes not very useful very quickly. I, the, the engineering of that. Anyway, all I'm saying is that it makes sense that we've got light poles that are at least 10 feet taller right next to the pole that's going in. Why not make it so that they can put a freaking pole up that's at least as tall as the light poles? It just seems like common sense. And it's just, once again, seems like really bad planning to not even consider it. But that's just me. They work on sight lines, don't they? Basically, it's line of sight. RF line of is sight. Line of sight. RF is always line of sight. So somebody actually did some engineering and came up with these sight lines. They're Forty-two. To be well, there. they know how bad how far they cover with, yeah. with this particular. Uh, it's my guess. Yeah. <clears throat> and honestly, from a staff planning perspective, I would never think that bringing something forward that exceeds the height limit would even be considered. Um, well, well might we, not in if we can, in, in, If we can bring it forward. And if it there weren't already the 56 or 60 foot light poles there, I don't think we would even be talking about it. Talk also about serving it. a yeah. utility function, right? Sure. I mean, you know, yeah. one delivers light, the other delivers internet. Same, same. <laughs> So, anyway, not to hold up this discussion for that, but well, that's the best question on the table. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, my my opinion is yes, it can be changed. Another carrier wants to come and incur some expense to take that pole down and put a pole in that matches height and go for the variance and all that. It's certainly possible for somebody to do. They'd have. An existing site that we could say, hey, we got this existing site. Here would it, here's what it would take. You'd have to put in your own pole. You'd have to put in a taller pole, or whatever okay. the case may be. Except that, except um, that you're, we're adding costs. I know. Right. So the only question I have, really, for this purpose, is is it anything to, to clear wires advantage to be taller? And so I'm guessing they must have looked at it and said, no, 42 is serving our purpose we don't need to go for a variance to get anything more in which case I don't know why we I don't know why we mess with it at this juncture unless they were told that if you ask for taller than 42 you're not going to get it so that's my question no what they're going to go into is, Clearwater and say what we tell them is what the require what what our requirements are and if they go if they need to go above that then they're going to need a variance and it adds additional risk to the application and it adds, it, it adds additional cost to go taller, and you may have to go deeper with a larger foundation for a taller antenna, right? right. So, so you might be able to say somewhere down the road, we could put a taller pole on there, but you might not, they might not have engineered the foundation for a taller pole. No. Had more wind load on it, whatever. Anyway, just throwing that it's out It's also two foot in diameter. Yeah. All the way up. All right. I do put you back on the class, but they they have to have the engineer that way. Okay. Well, we are we're at the point where the applicant has made they've made well they've made application uh, with this uh, uh, this height <laughs> in this location at this time for this equipment, and I think that's where we're at. So that's correct. Ah. Is the applicant permitted to come back and request? Uh, I mean, if we approve this and they want to come back and say, you know, yeah, we would take a shot and go for the height of the ball, would they, I mean, anything preventing them from doing that? 
Right. So they've heard our discussion. They know what's going on. If they want to make that choice, that's up to them. They can come back and say, you know, they've got an approved. They've already got an approved plan. If they want to come back and request a sure a change, yeah. they can. Their their sure. existing plan would be still be approved, and okay. they Definitely. can bring that forth. Forth and so. And we looked at in our initial discussion with them. We looked at replacing one of the light poles. Right. Um, right. But there's you know that that's a little. That has additional expense to it as well. So, yeah. so I think I, I mean I think there's been enough discussion that that you know if if there is a desire to do that, the opportunity is there to do it. And I agree with you, James. It's you know it'd be nice to get these things be, you know in front of enough people before it, it was um, done. But you know that doesn't always happen, and our process doesn't allow it. But we do have a way for them to accomplish it if they want to. So. Yep. Any other discussion? Um, I will invite anyone in the audience in the, from the public who wishes to comment on this uh, can, to come forth. Seeing none, uh, we uh, will allow the applicant to say any final words or if you wish to. If you want to, just come to the microphone. So. I think that's good. It's good? Okay. Good. Okay. If there's uh, no further comment, we'll close the public hearing. Okay. All right. Uh, just any other discussion from anyone? No, I think they've made a nice approach to get this stealth canister thing incorporated in, in the overall. I thought we were going to get the pine tree. <laughs> you want the pine tree? <laughs> have you seen the pine tree ones? No. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They have one at the top of Keystone, one of the runs up there. Yeah, it looks like You have to look tree. twice, but you can definitely tell it's like an artificial Christmas tree when you really look at it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the superior Christmas tree. Anything else? Okay. Um, do you want anyone to make a, a motion on this item? This is a resolution. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, I'll, I'll make a motion to approve resolution of the planning commission, resolution number PC4 series 2010, resolution of the planning commission of the town of Superior approving a final plat site plan for Clearwire Wireless. Okay, I have a motion from Commissioner McCool. Second from Commissioner yeah. Folsom. Any discussion? Mm -mm. All in favor, please raise your hand. One, two. All opposed? Commissioner McGinnis. Okay. All right. Motion, uh, resolution passes. Okay. Thank you. Um, that concludes item five of public hearing for the clear wireless file flat site plan. Item six is a review of the 2010 work plan. Matt, do you have a yeah, I included, presentation? Yeah, uh, I included for the planning commission uh, their the 2010 work plan that was ultimately blessed by the town board, um, which includes the Chapter 16 Land Use Code Rewrite, which um, the Planning Commission wrapped up this year mm -hmm. um, and is now on to the Town Board. Uh, we have the review and comment on proposed green building standards for commercial buildings. We received the final version of the recommendations from the Boulder County Consortium that included businesses and cities within the county on recommendations for the commercial green building code. So we're going through those and drafting the the codes to to incorporate into our um, into our code, and once we have a finalized draft, we'll bring those forward to the planning commission. Still, it's still this year, um, but it's taken longer to get them from the county than expected. So those will be coming forward. Um, did the, did any other? I mean, it's just maybe you don't even know the answer to this. But did any other municipalities in the vicinity adopt those yet? No. Okay. No, they're all, as far as I know, they're all work, still working um, 
to draft their own version of them. We're trying to keep it as uniform as possible. Not uh, the goal was to get something that all the cities and the county could agree on, so that um, the final version that the cities adopted didn't change a whole bunch. So we're hoping that that um, still remains the case. But nobody that I know of has adopted them yet. So. Are they formatting it like leads? Huh? Are they yeah. formatting like lead certification? Um, they're um, it's not lead certification. I mean, it doesn't reach that level. Okay. Uh, because we didn't want to impact the businesses too greatly to where the cost was so so much that they did damage. So right. it doesn't, doesn't reach the level. Okay. It's, it's a lot like the residential where it's, it's you know, approximately 30% above the current code is what it comes out to. It's hybrid. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, the capital improvement projects is referred to by the town board. Um, and then the Conoco Phillips site. Um, I read an article recently where Louisville's kind of waiting to get the final plans from Conoco Phillips. They pushed back the timeline for construction now to, I think it's 2013 at the earliest. So, are, are you aware of some dispute between Louisville, Lafayette, and Broomfield? I've heard on, that. On, yeah, that's holding up uh, some preliminary approvals. As far as uh, uh, road construction, that's uh, I don't, I don't know what it was. I just, yeah. I just heard, kind of heard it through the grapevine. Uh, so. So, and I don't know if that's what's kind of holding the plans coming forward, but Louisville's still hoping to receive those this fall still, but I, I haven't heard. It's, it's kind of been put on hold as far as I can tell. We haven't been able to make any real headway with. No, and. Reviewing the impact of that. Yeah, um, they had some input early on Earlier this year, uh, the open space committees um, from the various communities met. Um, but since then, there, there's, it's just kind of like stopped. Everything kind of stopped. So we continue to make attempts, but um, I'm hoping as if they once they submit to the city of Louisville, that maybe we can get something in front of the planning commission, just as a presentation and feedback from us. So. So we're right on track with that on item four. Okay. Some things are out of our control. Uh, but. Um, there's lots of year left. Huh? So there's, yeah, there's only, lots of year left. Only yeah, three yeah. quarters of the way through. And then the uh, future plans, plans for the town center project. Um, the board recently had a uh, work session on this just to update the newer board members who weren't on the board at the time that the vision was was drafted and what came out of that was um, not to while they're going to revisit uh, at a future meeting and have the consultant that helped us with the original vision come back out just to go through it again with the entire board the new board um, but ultimately the board decided that they don't plan on making any change to that vision that they that was developed in 2007. Um, and the reason for that was um, any developer that comes forward knows what's out there, but they're going to propose what they think is best for the property anyway. So um, that's an update on that. But um, so that's great. So it looks like. Just about three quarters of the year is gone, and we still have about three quarters of this year's work, work plan to do. Review. So that's perfect. <laughs> well, we've reviewed. Right well, we've reviewed. We've completed. Well, you know, yeah. we've completed item one, which is a biggie, and we've we've completed all of the capital improvement projects that have been referred to us. That's true. Right. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> and, and chapter sixteen. That's what I said. Item one. Was, chapter sixteen. I mean, it did take a chunk of work. Yes, it did. But see, the board's not done with their. 
approvals yet of Chapter 16? No, um, they have a, a second work session on October 4th. They're going through it line by line, are they? They're going through page by page. It's awesome. They More are power going to through page by page. It's awesome. Yeah. See, they got this sweet black line version that they, it was really yeah. easy for them to do. <laughs> <laughs> um, Just kidding. So October 4th is, I, I think they'll wrap their initial review up on October 4th. Okay. Okay. So at what point do we revisit the 2011 work plan? Uh, at? Well, <laughs> just take off five hours. Yeah, that's probably not going to be necessary. <laughs> <laughs> should, that be, should, that be six? should that be item six of the uh, 2010 work plan? Is the 2011 work plan? Uh, we could, See, I mean, dedicate a meeting to talk yeah, about Why don't you let us get back to you on that? Yeah, okay. That's what I thought. Uh, later this, I mean, at the end of this year or the beginning of next year. Did you read the draft minutes from May 4th? Well, here, this paragraph right here. That tells you why we don't need to go do the 2011 work plan. I know. Because we're a necessary evil. Thank you. Because <laughs> they don't work. <laughs> All right. Is that it for um, item six review of the 2010 work plan? Let's Any other questions or comments or anything about that? Anyone, Scott? Okay. Uh, item seven, staff announcements. Yeah, a couple things I mentioned already uh, with regard to the town center and chapter 16. Um, the town is looking at, I know the planning commission has been interested in this, the town board is looking at um, forming an economic development council. <laughs> so, so if there's anyone, uh, they haven't adopted the resolution forming the council yet. But once they do, I want to let you know if you're interested. Um, there'll be publication accepting applications if you're interested. And it's being headed by Trustee Hansen. So if you have questions, I'm sure he'd be happy to talk to you about it. Okay. But Excellent. We'll get done here in the next couple meetings, I'm sure. So um, <coughs> the board is going through the 2011 budget. They have a meeting. Uh, at the um, next board meeting, which is on Monday, they have a uh, work session on policy items for the budget. Um, so nothing huge, but if anybody's interested. A little attorney money for Chapter 16. Uh, for the, never mind. No, just kidding. <laughs> um, and I'm happy to forward those policy items too if you're interested in what they are for in case anybody wants to come down and discuss them but can do that for you and if anybody wants a copy of the budget uh, let me know I can forward that to you as well isn't it online as well yeah uh, <coughs> yes it is but uh, if you want a hard copy let me know uh, Resolute has finalized, I don't know if I mentioned this at our last meeting, they finalized an agreement with the Hilton Hotel chain for one of their Homewood Suites, I think is the brand, for their property. So we're working out a couple details for them and then I think they'll be coming forward with their final flat site plan and subdivision, minor, major subdivision. And I'm not sure yet if Hilton will come forward with their final flat site plan at the same time for the property they're buying or it'll come soon after but where is that the resolute property is the horizons commercial piece okay but it's owned by a company called resolute so then is there if there's go ahead, sorry. Is there any further discussion about home rule and i mean obviously we can't really take advantage of hotel taxes and fees without that and no being presented um, with one, is the that board has the current board has no interest, as far as I can tell, pursuing home rule. So, um, so that limits, like you said, our lodging tax. We can't do that. But um, we hope that with the hotel going in, it'll spur some other uses, whether office or just retail pads happening there at the site. And if we do go home rule after they've been in 
place, then can those be imposed? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. There's another. There. I heard there was another hotel approved in Broomfield somewhere, and I don't know if anyone has heard that. I've heard that, but, no but I don't know. I, I kind of gathered it was <coughs> where maybe, maybe stored a Rista or something. I yeah. don't. I don't know exactly where, but. Um. No, a new, a, a new one that's going to be built. I thought it was right. Is that ninety six? Mm -hmm. um, where they're building those condominium units right, mm -hmm. right across from the condominium. Is that Broomfield site? there? Yeah. That's no. there. Maybe that. Maybe that's it. Yeah, that's what I heard. Just open that one. It's just oh, open one there. Yeah, yeah, it's it's pretty, pretty, well, the, the, Hilt, the, yeah, the Hilton suites or whatever, right? The Hilton. That's what it is, right? The one that's over there, it just opened. Oh, okay. No, this is uh, one that just closed in the last 90 days or something. Mm -hmm. I, I, the only other one I've heard of is uh, uh, on 104th or Church Ranch. US 36. That's Westminster. Yeah, that's Westminster. Okay. Any word on our other two parcels? Uh, Oshkosh or 176? No, uh, Remington Homes has 18 months to final file there. And uh, they completed their water studies, but we haven't received um, an application from them. And then the, what was the other one? 76. Uh, the, oh, yeah, the storage. Guardian. Yes, um, they uh, have three years because they requested vested rights. Um, but we met with them recently on some access issues there off of 76 and the adjoining property, the one acre property to the north. Um, and they still felt like they were a year out before construction started. So. I was heard there was an owner or somebody trying to buy a land over on the new town center. Is that their? Yeah, we've met with um, a couple of companies. One who has options on uh, one um, has options on all of all of the properties except I think Anderson was the last piece they were trying to get an option on. So, um, so we're just waiting to see if they close or you know what happens there. They, all the properties. I mean, they, the Alamenkic, Weedas, three remaining parcels, the Weinstein unincorporated piece, uh, Spicer, Shock, and then they were trying to get Anderson. So, yeah. That's, 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 a, lot, that's, a, that's a lot of land. It's yeah. <laughs> a lot of land to take down. Yeah, you, don't, yeah, you don't buy it unless you're yeah. thinking about doing something. <laughs> <Exactly. with it. laughs> Last time I checked. Well, unless you think sitting on it for three years and selling it for more than you bought it for is a good right. idea. Yeah. But it, that's still doing something with it because you've assembled it, right? So. <coughs> okay. Um, any other things? Is there an opening on ProStack? There is an opening on ProStack. Really? Yes, I think somebody just recently resigned. They did. Yes, yeah. <laughs> that's right. Uh, <coughs> So, yep, if anybody's I'm interested in taking on another night of meetings, there's an opening on ProStack. Um, and I think we have one on uh, the recycling committee also. I think two. Two? So, <laughs> there's opportunity. Okay. Joe? Yes, ma'am. I have one quick thing. Okay. On the look ahead, it shows planning commission on 11 2. Even if we had something, we wouldn't be able to hold it that day because that is election, election day. So we're just going to push whatever, anything. We would push whatever, or have it that Wednesday or Monday or something, but not that Tuesday. And on the, net, on the look ahead for the first meeting in October? October 5th? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Nothing. Nothing, right? And then is there any anything on or the... Or October 19th. 19th, right? Sure. There's nothing, right? Yeah. Okay. Any, anything that could fill that slot? Um... I don't have anything uh, development-wise, but if, um, if there's uh, something, you know, if I can ever get a hold of the Conoco Phillips guys, you know, I try to get them scheduled as soon as possible. But or if there's anything the Planning Commission wants to discuss or meet on, I'm happy to put stuff together maybe as well too. So okay, but that night I'll be. I, I won't be in town, so if we have a meeting, Fred will be covering that meeting. 
on the pivot. Okay. Anything else? Yeah, I got some. So uh, after 14 years of unofficial involvement and 12 years of official involvement with the town of Superior, I'm going to um, bow to my other obligations and step down from my spot on the Planning Commission. And I can do that as soon as you have somebody to take it. So this is your official announcement, or do you want to write us a letter? Or? I, however you prefer to have it happen, Phyllis. Um, I can write a letter. Usually they write like a letter. Write. And say, okay. Unless your term is up and you don't go on, then you don't. But yeah, that probably would be the best. Say it ain't so. Oh, it's so. <laughs> Just got, I have two teenage daughters and Tuesday nights are busy, so. That's my head hurts. So there it is. Okay. Well, good luck. I don't think I'll leave it yet. Until we fill the position. So your your intent is to stay until the position is filled. Okay. Until you find somebody, but you know, uh, know that it's open. Sure. So, uh, based on that, we'll. Add one more. Publish. <laughs> Add one more to our list of vacancies. Yeah. Um, and then an another item I meant to discuss with um, John was we, uh, the Planning Commission appointed Craig as the vice chair, um, and we said we'd revisit that once we had a full Planning Commission. Uh, so I don't know if you want to revisit it or if we just want to continue forward with the setup as we have it. Or did we say it? Okay. Craig, Craig didn't want to take it without having a full planning commission decide whether or not he should have it. I think. Was <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that night we just had a barely had a quorum. Or something. Yeah. So, yeah. There was okay. like four of us. All right. Well, five, four, I would five. say we can. We should. Then, if that's the case, we should discuss that at uh, the next. You know, the next meeting. But we we don't often have all. You know, right, all yeah. nine members anyway. Correct. So, and and I mean, you can leave it in place as it is too. Sure, mm -hmm. everybody's fine with that. I mean, we don't have to discuss it again. Right. You could throw that up for a vote right now. <laughs> throw that up for a vote. Just nix this thing right now. Let's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. get it done. More, more people want to have. Yeah, we have, well, we have uh, eight members without Rochelle here right now. So mm -hmm. if someone would like to uh, to propose that now, uh, I'll open that up. Move that we leave Commissioner Prestesater in his currently appointed slot. As vice chair, per se. Vice chair. Whatever his appointed slot is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's fine. I'll have a motion. A motion. Motion and a second by Commissioner McCool. Any discussion? All in favor? You can vote for yourself. Okay, that passed unanimously. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Be careful what you ask for. <laughs> Walk by the window, I look for you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think that's it. If there's nothing else. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Thanks. Yay.